Okay. Uh, yep. Just wait for this to uh, okay. load up. Just while while he's loading up, um, we we're gonna post the slideshows and a wrap up of of everything on Frog Loop, which is Care 2's uh, uh, blog. And uh, so uh, hopefully I'll write that up in the next day or two. Okay. Uh, my name is Rashid Zamora. I'm director of strategy for Foresight Studios. We're a digital creative agency based here in DC. Primarily does uh, content strategy, design, and development for nonprofits. Um, so I think you've heard this point made pretty consistently across the board, but there's kind of this evolving ecosystem of content that we're seeing where um, Cope, which is very much, I think, associated with the old hub and spoke model where people would publish a, a bunch of content to their website and then publish it out via SMS, email, whichever. But I think we're now more in this kind of new model where we really have to think about content in four buckets. There's own content, which are the things that you're really producing for your own website, your any microsites that you're producing. Um, borrowed content, which is a curated piece, which is the type of content that we see companies like Upworthy doing. Paid content, which is uh, paid media, and we'll dive into that a little bit. And then that earned piece, which is really you know UGC and social media content. How are you getting people to actually talk about your brand? Um, UGC, user-generated User-generated content, if you're not familiar with the uh, system. So one other thing to keep in mind um, when developing content for social media is that content is paid media, essentially. It's a lot of people, um, I think, think of advertising different from content strategy, but your, your, the content that you publish on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, on other, or Tumblr, I should say, are really the, the, the pieces of content that you can ultimately turn into paid media ads. So you should approach content strategy from the mindset of a media planner. So figuring out like who your target audience is and what are the platforms where those people really engage. So I think Beth made a lot of great points about really doing that audience research up front and really trying to figure out where, um, make sure that you're putting out the right content on the right platforms because at any given time, if you're seeing that you know, people are engaging highly with a piece of content that you posted on Facebook, you can easily put paid media dollars behind that to amplify the reach of any particular piece of content that you have. So as you're developing um, a strategy for where you publish content on social media, also think about how can you amplify that content or the reach and engagement of that content by actually investing some paid media dollars behind it. So work with your advertising um, team if you do have one in-house or your paid media um, team to really figure out all this stuff out. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that there's almost this um, hierarchy to how you should be planning your social media content. So think of it in terms of, of media assets. right? Ultimately, you have a single message that you want to deliver probably across multiple platforms. So as a rough example, like pollution is bad, right? So you have multiple assets that you can use to dis distribute that information. Whether there be infographics, presentations, uh, videos, etc. Those assets should help you determine which are the best platforms to distribute content. So as an example, Facebook came out with a report last year that said by including images with any of your content, you can see upwards of a 34% uh, higher level of engagement. Um, we know that Pinterest is really a platform for distributing visual content and generally generates high levels of engagement. So really think about, based off of the, the assets that you have for distributing your message, whether that be a video, infographic, presentation, et cetera, determine what platforms that you really want to distribute that content across. This is kind of a, mo so really focus again on that message, determining what assets you have to distribute that message and have that be uh, what helps you determine what platforms that you push that content out to. Um, and a couple of tools that you can, I think, think about when uh, looking at how, what are some of the technologies that you can be distributing content through. Um, Alfresco is, is just one of many con asset management systems. I don't know if folks, does anyone here use an asset management system or familiar with it? Anyone? Okay, so it's essentially software that allows you to manage large um, numbers of documents, images, videos, etc. And a lot of these systems are building in functionality for you to distribute content to social media channels. So if you're an organization that develops a lot of publications, or a lot of um, documents and images, you can use leverage um, tools like this to be able to publish that content across multiple social uh, platforms. Another trend that we're starting to see within content management systems is that, I think I'll, you're seeing this more on the open source side, but systems like WordPress and Drupal um, are starting to actually integrate system native uh, tools natively, so if you are publishing content on your website, you can share those out to Twitter and Facebook and other social platforms in a format that works. I think uh, systems like Hootsuite, if you publish out an image, uh, it doesn't actually host natively within Twitter or some other systems, 
what this will do is actually format it so all of your assets are formatted properly for the social platform. Um, and then we really focus on community management. I think there are a number of tools that you should be really looking at. First, it's kind of a, a social CMS, um, like a Buddy Media or a Hootsuite, that are really built for publishing tools to um, social platforms. Um, and then tools like Radian 6 and Attentively, and I think these are kind of a bucket of systems that we really don't think about when we're planning for social media, but they really help you get a sense of how people are talking about your brand or your cause. So you can use these tools to aggregate any tweets or Facebook posts or blog posts or blog comments people are making about any particular topic and to get a better understanding of you know, what are the issues that are important to people, what is the general sentiment around that, are they talking negatively or positively about a topic, and where are these conversations happening the most. And these are tools that can really help you determine where you invest your time. Because if you're finding that people are mostly speaking on, um, say, having to post about a particular topic, and you're not finding a lot of conversation happening on Twitter, you really want to be where people are having the conversation. You don't want to have conversations in a silo where people aren't necessarily interested in your topic. So that was my brief presentation. Uh, I know there'll be a lot of questions, so great. Cool.